it's only with Greek drama that we started to have a, a true and, uh, and uh, authentic investigation of the character of Electra. Um, the character appears in all three major tragedians, Greek tragedians. So it starts with um, Aeschylus in the Orestia, and as you may know, the Orestia is, of course, a trilogy comprised of three plays. And the first play is Agamemnon, which um, details the return from war, from the Trojan War of Agamemnon, and uh, his killing at the hands of Clytemnestra in the house. Uh, the second play of the Orestia is called The Libation Bearers, and that's the first time that we see Electra. Electra is depicted in this play as uh, crying, weeping, and bringing offerings to the tomb of her father. Um, and her uh, wailing, kind of um, almost in a, in, a, in a religious sense, spiritual sense, brings about the, uh, the presence of Orestes. And together they talk and they decide to kill their mother and Aegisthus, who's coming home. Um, the third play by Aeschylus is called The Humanities, and it deals with the aftermath of the killing of Clytemnestra. So it's the trial that Orestes has to undergo um, to expiate the fact that he killed his own mother. Aeschylus' ideas in dealing with the fall of the house of Atreus and the, and the, and the character of Electra was to really depict um, a transition, an essential transition in Greek life, which was from personal revenge to the birth of the law. So it starts with the killing um, of Agamemnon, and it ends with a trial in which Orestes is on uh, uh, trial for having killed his mother, and Athena that casts a vote, the final vote, to actually save Orestes' life. So that's the first incarnation of the myth. The second one is actually Sophocles, which Hugo von Hofmannsthal looks at the moment that he writes in 1903 um, his one-act tragedy on which Strauss based the opera. Um, and Sophocles depicts um, a different type of, of Electra. Electra in Aeschylus was more like a function of religion. It was really a tragedy, the libation bearers, that underlined the uh, necessity to perform rites of expiation and sacrifice. Um, and Aeschylus was a very religious man. With Sophocles Electra, we have a, a different type of world. This is a woman who wants to take revenge. She has agency, she has power, she's the one who convinces Orestes to move on to kill uh, their mother. And, uh, and, and there is a, um, a single-mindedness about her and the desire to take revenge. We're gonna talk a little bit more about how essential is for Electra to take revenge in a second. And then the third incarnation of the myth is in the youngest, the younger of the, the youngest of the three playwright, and it's uh, Euripides, and he writes his own version of Electra, which Electra is actually married. Um, Aegisthus forces her to marry a peasant. Um, it's it's a, a more psychologically driven drama than um, Sophocles and Aeschylus, for sure. Um, to go back, and this is like a very long preamble, just to give you a sense of how uh, rich and layered the myth is and steeped into um, Greek mythology and narratives. Um, something that I think it's important to understand, you know, in, in the case of Electra, but also really pretty much all Greek um, tragic characters, is the notion that they're stuck in an impossible situation. They have to make a decision, and it has to be both the right one and the wrong one. By right one, I mean that they have to take action because they're put in a situation in which if they don't, they lose their honor. At the same time, uh, their demise is intrinsically connected to making what's right to them, to making that choice. Um, it's, um, it's what Susan Bember, one of the most important uh, scholars of Greek tragedy, talks about the impossibility of life for the Greek um, tragic hero. So in this sense, Electra has to, must, absolutely, to uh, honor the memory of her father, Agamemnon, who's been killed in such you know, a hideous uh, way. She has to take revenge. At the same time, she's put in the situation that in order to take revenge, she has to kill, she has to destroy her own family. So essentially her mother, uh, Clytemnestra. Thank you.